Welcome to Animating with Esther, the online self-paced edition. Uh, um, this is for you to be able to animate your math lessons like a pro. So, um, Animating with Esther, today's lesson, you will be making and animating a parabola, making and animating an inequality, and making and animating a normal distribution. Let's get started. Okay, first we're going to be animating a parabola. I'm just showing you what the end product is going to look like, and then I'm going to walk you through it. I'm new to using PowerPoint. I usually use Keynote, but I think I figured everything out. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to insert a blank slide. And then after I insert a blank slide, I'm going to insert a picture because I want a grid on the screen. And instead of making my own grid, I use, I teach algebras, pre-made graph and number line templates. I find the one that I want which is this one, five units up, down, left, right. Yep. And then what I am going to do is, is I am going to go to insert and I'm gonna find the shapes. Um, and then I'm going to insert the dots for the parabola first. So each point, right? It's gonna make an oval. I'm going to adjust the dimensions of it so that they're even. And then I lock them by checking that box. So I'm just changing the color and changing the outline. For some reason, the dimensions got off again. So I'm going to adjust them so that they're the same because I don't want an oval or an ellipse. I just want a perfect circle. So there we go. We're looking good. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, copy and paste five dots because I know I want the, the, the five points on the parabola and then I'm going to go to insert again and I'm going to now find the shapes and I'm going to find, use the freeform tool. So that tool right there, that is what's called the freeform tool. I'm going to start at the point two comma four. I'm going to click right there and then I'm going to click at negative one comma one and I'm going to click at zero comma zero. I'm going to click at one comma one and then I'm going to click at two comma four. Now to get it rounded, what I'm going to do is I am going to make sure it's highlighted and click edit points. I'm zooming in just so we could see a little bit better. I am going to right click the middle point first, the middle point first. It took me a long time to figure out that it needed to be the middle point first for whatever reason, uh, PowerPoint insists on that. So you right click the point and you click make smooth. Once you do that, you're actually good to go. I made the bottom three points smooth. And once I did that, I was good to go. I'm finding some arrows now um, because I want arrows on the both ends. So that means I need to go make my parabola thicker again. So I'm gonna go to weight um, so that it's thicker. So I made it a four point weight at that point. Um, I think I'm trying to figure out why it's black and not red. Um, so. Oh, and look, I can fill the inside if we were doing inequalities. So I figured out the colors. So I'm gonna go ahead. I think I left it on blue. I'm gonna make the weight at six point. And now I'm gonna start animating. So I like to show my students how to plot their points uh, just for the few of them and that made it to algebra two somehow and uh, don't know how. So I'm gonna use the path animation tool and I'm gonna click draw freeform. So if I literally just drag my mouse in the direction that I want it to go, look at that wobbly, terrible path, then double click at the end, I will get it to go in that path. Now that path's kind of wobbly. If I wanted to do straight, I would just click the point, use the draw freeform, click, 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 double click to finish, boom. Look at us. Uh, okay. And then click, click, double click to finish. I think I was not clicking at the beginning for the first one. So I messed it up and it was just going up. So I'm going to fix that. I do it again for some weird reason. <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna get rid of it again, and I think the third time's the charm that I actually fix it on this third time. Yeah. 
frothy form. So I just dragged my cursor this time instead and drew the path instead of like clicking the path. I made it a little wobbly, but whatever. That middle point, I want it to be pronounced. So I'm going to give it a different effect because it's the origin. So I'm gonna make it bounce in. And then these next two, I'm just going to do the same draw freeform animation. Double click. There we go. And then the last one, I'm going to click the middle, click over two spaces, click up four spaces, double click at the end, and I have a nice beautiful path right there. So we did it. Play. Yay. Uh-huh. 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 Yes, we did that. Okay. Um, let's do inequalities. Making and animating an inequality. So that's what this one's gonna look like. Did my rise over my run. Did my shade. Beautiful. So, inserting a new slide. I'm gonna go up to the first slide and copy the grid because I don't wanna do the long process all over again. So, I copied the grid from the first slide and then we're just gonna paste it, I believe. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> Copied it, pasted it, boom, great. So, of course, I'm going to go to my little um, shapes. I always think shapes are under draw, but that's not where they are. They're right there. <laughs> I'm gonna use my oval slash circle feature again. I'm going to even out the proportion so that it's an actual circle. I'm gonna lock the proportion so that when I resize it, it stays a circle. I'm changing the colors. Um, and we're looking good. Mm -hmm. Rise of three over one, okay. So those are gonna be my two points. And now I'm going to insert a line. I just realized that my y-intercept is at negative two, but when I write the equation, I think I wrote negative one, but whatever. <laughs> you get the point. So this is the line that I'm inserting and I'm just angling it correctly so that it's at the right slope. This is positive three over one. Good, good, good. Um, so I'm, I adjusted it, looking real good here. Yes, thicken that line up. I tried navy blue, but it's just too dark, so we need a brighter, prettier color. Yay! That's what we like. Um, I'm gonna put a text box. I says y equals 3x minus one. It should say minus two, shame on me, but honestly, I make mistakes all the time. Um, and honestly, my fourth period is the one that usually catches stuff. <laughs> You guys are math teachers, I think you'll be all right. I know some of you are dying a little on the inside. <laughs> so I just made the text bigger, I made it Century Gothic because it's my go-to font for no reason at all, it's just clean. Um, once I do that, I'm gonna animate these words. I'm not really sure how, but I'm gonna use the drop feature. Cool, cool, it's visually appealing, I guess. Um, the first thing I want to come up on the screen is of course our Y-intercept. Um, so I'm gonna click on the y-intercept and I'm going to have it animate in. We're gonna spiral that, there we go. Okay, looking good, looking good. So then this point over here, obviously I want it to move and do its rise over run. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it down over there and then I'm going to Rise up three, run over one, double click at the end of the path to finish it, and there it goes. So now I'm gonna create my, um, that's the line. I'm gonna create a shade. So I would have to change the equation, but I'm not changing the equation to an inequality. 
another mistake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what I get for trying to be fancy. Anyway. Um, we are going to insert another shape. We're going to use the free form shape. I'm going to zoom in here just to get close. I'm going to start there. Click. Click the corner. The shades are usually pretty because they're nice uh, polygons. Nothing curved. It tells you when it's closed. So I am going to change the color because that blue is definitely not it. Okay. And then I am going to go to my format pane and mess with the transparency or the opacity. Um, and then we're going to be good to go. So we're going to animate. So um, I accidentally clicked checkered board, but I don't want checkered board. I want it to wipe. And I think I want it to wipe from left. And I'm going to put the time up a little bit longer. Zoom out. All right. Preview. Hey. Y equals 3x to minus 1. Rise over run. Sweep. Shade. Look at us. Okay. Making and animating a normal distribution. This says 64%, but what should it really say? 68%. Okay. Another mistake. Are we shocked? No, we're not. I'm just teaching you to animate. I'm not teaching you math right now. I promise I'm better than this in the classroom. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm just going to show you what our end product should look like. Boom. Boom. Yes. Okay. So obviously we're going to insert new slide. Once we insert the new slide, we're going to go to shapes again, insert shape, and I'm just going to use a plain straight line, no arrows, no nothing, to make that bottom border real quick. There we go. Um, I want it to be black, and I want it to be a little heavier. Yep. So then I'm going to go to insert and shape again, and I'm going to pick the freeform tool. My cousins are texting me, lol. <laughs> So what I'm going to do with the freeform tool is I'm going to make a straight line. Now, for some reason, that happened on accident. So I'm just going to double click and then delete it. And I'm going to try again. Um, freeform tool. Make a straight line as straight as I can. Double click at the end. So once it's double clicked at the end, I'm going to go to edit points. And I'm going to try to find the middle as best as I can. And I'm going to lift it up. So now you see how that's straight. I'm going to take that little joint there and try to round it out a little bit, move it. So this is the part that for me is complicated in PowerPoint, trying to curve things. For me, I find curving items is much easier in Keynote, but I do remember when I first started Keynote, even that was a little tricky to me. So I'm, I'm figuring it out little by little. So I just keep messing with all of the joints until I get them to be close to what I think that they should look like. So, um, at this point, I'm like, all right, that's not bad. And again, I'm not a perfectionist. I know some, a lot of teachers are perfectionists and they could not deal with that lopsided curve. That's not my testimony. So <laughs> uh, that lopsided curve is good enough for me, okay? Um, I should really get rid of my text messages when I'm doing a screen recording. <laughs> uh, guys, if you know me, you just know that I'm a hot mess all the time. And it's fine. <laughs> okay, so I use the freeform tool because I want to show uh, the area under the curve that is um, one standard deviation away from the mean. I need to curve the top of that, so I'm going to make the points editable. Edit points, great. I'm going to even that out a little bit, just a little bit. And then I'm going to mess with the top of this curve for a long time until I get it to do what I want it to do. I really have no rhyme or reason behind this and how I'm making it curve. I'm just moving with the moving the joints a little bit. I move them a lot. Okay, so I changed the color and changed the transparency. So now I just duplicated the shape and then I flipped it so that it could match on the other side so I didn't have to make a whole new shape because that already took me long enough, right? So I'm gonna insert a text box which clearly I had a little trouble with. I'm gonna insert a text box, and then the text box, it's gonna say what percentage of the data is shown below. Um, if I did that quickly, 
that's what it would say <laughs> and then um hey 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 i'm gonna move that to the middle Boop. right there right there um i'm gonna duplicate the text box again um so that i can write the percentage of the data which is 34 percent, i believe but it wouldn't be the first time i was wrong um highlighted that changed that to 34 percent. we're gonna go ahead and drag that over here and then i'm gonna copy it and duplicate it or copy and paste it and i'm gonna drag that to the other side and then one more text box that's gonna say 68 percent, not 64 percent um wait maybe i started animating first Oh, okay, yes. I started animating first. So I animated the bottom line. I'm going to make it one second, and I'm going to do it from the left. There we go. That's what I want that to look like. So then we're going to click the top curve. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wipe it. But instead of coming up, I'm going to change the direction to make it go from the left to the right and change it to be one second. I'm going to wipe that up. Up is fine for that one. I like it like that. And then after that area under the curve gets highlighted, I'm going to ask the question what percentage of the data is shown. So I'm going to make it appear. Um, uh, but I'm going to adjust the animation settings in the animation pane. Uh, and I'm going to make it not all at once, but by letter. And then I'm going to bring in this 34%. I'm going to make that fly in. Great. I'm going to um, emphasize the question at the top again. So I'm going to click it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these yellow animations because I can add an animation to that if it's yellow. I cannot make it do another green animation. I can only do an emphasis at this point. So I'm going to wipe up the second space, one standard deviation below the mean. I'm going to animate the 34% um, with who knows what. I'm just uh, a wheel. Great. Haven't used that one before. And then... I'm going to uh, do another yellow one. What else can I can I do another yellow one on this? I don't even think I do. Okay, I don't put another one on there. But I insert a text box for the 68%. 68, look at me, not 64. Very good, very good. And then... Um, I'm going to change that font, I believe, because that's out of control. Whatever that font is. It's not Century Gothic. And we love Century Gothic. Okay, 68%. I'm going to animate that 68% um, to show... I think I just wanted to, to come in. And I like that, but then I tried to get it to change color, and it won't let me do both of those at the same time. So it'll only let me change color. So it's going to stay there on the screen, which probably wouldn't be ideal if you were teaching, but I just want to show that there's a change color option. That's very nice and very convenient. Um, so this animation where it goes letter by letter is one second a letter, which is ridiculously slow. So I would change that, obviously. <laughs> ah torture so it spins great to emphasize it again and then the second area comes up that comes up 68 percent turned pink and that's it that's it for today's lesson bye guys thanks for rocking with me let me know if there's anything you want me to do in the next video share this with your friends comment like it subscribe all that wonderful stuff and uh, if you want me to show you something that you want to do in your class leave it in the comments and i will get to it as soon as possible later